Good afternoon, everybody. Isn't that fiddle just amazing? Okay, so like, what is the difference between a fiddle and a violin? Is it just the same thing? Like, I mean, somebody tell me. Let me know in the comments. So, we are here to talk about Mr. Lane Stein. And that name may not mean a lot to you guys, but let me tell you straight up, that guy is a maniac. He's a very creative, talented, phenomenal maniac. He is the mad scientist of an arranger for voice play. Um, when I first started getting into just beatboxing, acapella in general, um, there was a, um, and, and this was like years ago for me, I think it was like maybe grade two, or maybe grade four, I don't know, I can't remember, that was just like a hundred years ago. Um, I was introduced to an acapella group, like a lo like kind of like a local city acapella group, and by the name of Hoja, sounds really weird, but um, yeah, they were like the first, my first introduction to acapella in a formal sense before I actually, you know, knew what it was. And uh, out of that acapella group, um, they kind of did like these little tutorials and they would uh, say to the audience that it was like, okay, well, like who wants to know about acapella or beatboxing? And like, you know, the kids would be like, oh yeah, 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 like I do, like I want to know what beatboxing is. And uh, then the beatboxer, I, I can't remember the members' names. This is so long ago, you guys, and my memory's just shot. And yeah, the, the beatboxer that was in that group, he he would do um, a demonstration, basically. And they like actually had like a snare drum, and he would emulate the sound of the snare drum. And me, as a young kid, hearing that for the first time, I'm like, whoa, that's like amazing, right? So, but then as I got a little older, I kind of got a little bit in denial about beatboxing and what it was really about, because I'm like, there's no way. There's no way that the human voice can emulate the sound of an instrument. And, like, this was before technology really took off with, like, Melodyne and uh, Autotune and all that other, you, you know, like, just the, the, the vocal engineering. It, it, yeah, that was like my first introduction to beatboxing. And then uh, once I got more into acapella, I was like, okay, let me just really take a listen to beatboxing separately and really get a feel for what it was all about. And once I started to really understand, I, I wouldn't say the science behind it because I, I don't think that there is a lot of science behind it, but just the um, just the creativity, and it was like, okay, the human voice is capable of doing something like that, and I didn't realize that there were so many different levels that were involved in beatboxing, and, um, like, a lot more, uh, like, on TikTok, for example, there are a lot of famous bass, baritone beatboxers, and, um, they're absolutely crazy, but, that's not what I'm here to talk about, so I'm getting off track, and I had a feeling that that was going to happen, so I apologize. Getting back to Lane, this is kind of building up to, like, my understanding of beatboxing, and then kind of understanding why Lane kind of amazes me in a fact, because, like, with beatboxing in general, um, yeah, I just completely was in denial, and I kind of was against it completely, because I just... I had just kind of categorized beatboxing as involving with rap, and I'm not the biggest fan of rap. So I was just like, no, nope, get it away from me. I don't want to hear it. It sucks. <laughs> but now I love it. You know, I, I've changed my tune as I've gotten older. So Lane Stein, not only can he play a mean violin, oh my god. You gotta check out Warriors by Voice Play. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. I'm gonna post a link in the description for that. 
Oh my god. I mean, if you've listened to the beginning of this, you'd, you'd get what I'm talking about. It's just, he's fierce on the violin. Um, and also, there seems to be a lot of other beatboxers that play violins and cellos and stuff like that. Um, and that always amazes me, like, how they actually have, like, another talent within their own talent, you know, like, kind of something to back it up. If things didn't work out, they could still go for it for, like, violin or piano or cello or, you know, just anything else. But, uh, all that being said, Lane's crazy. He's absolutely crazy. But just recently, like, I had uh, discovered that he is very, um, harsh with his, um, critiquing of how people arrange things, and, uh, but it's all beneficial because he is pushing you to do better. Like, what you may, may have made for yourself, it's like, nah, you can make that so much better. It's good but not good enough, you know? So he's giving you that cr creative push um, in a very harsh way to make you realize that, hey, you have more um, possibility in you. You have more creativity at your disposal. So it's like, just got to dig deeper, got to work harder, got to find it. So that I always found was astounding about him because he... For his arrangement specifically, they're so electric. And then it kind of gives me, it kind of makes me wonder, uh, what has he said to the other guys that, um, when he's done an arrangement and has sent it off to the rest of the guys, like how, like how have they, how have they really, um, absorbed what he's put down? I mean, cause I don't know. Can you be harsh with a Lane Stein arrangement? I, I personally, I, I wouldn't say that because I know nothing, you know, like I, like I would be way out of the sphere to say it, um, just to say anything. Like I'd be like, no, nah, it, it's great, man. It's, it's awesome. But, uh, I'd be completely out of my league for, you know, criticizing anything. And sometimes I could be very critical about things sometimes, but you know, when it comes to other people's work, um, I mean, I've learned a little bit more about like, well, nah, it's just not really there yet. Or, you know, this could use some work. You know, you just got to work on it a little bit more. Um, but with Lane, you look at some of his arrangements and um, I'm going to use this as an example. When he was speaking with Elizabeth Zarhoff, go check her out. She's amazing. Um, she's also a mother to be. Believe it or not, I am. I was. I was shocked when I heard about that. Uh, so they were breaking down Moana, and uh, I managed to see the thousands of drum tracks that Lane had for that specific arrangement, and it is so good. I might just put a little audio track in here, possibly uh, watch my video get copyrighted. <laughs> but no. Um, just looking at the arrangement itself, I'm like, there's like 30 different drum tracks in this thing. What is going on? And like, Lane is always so proud about the drum tracks. Like, he's just always so happy about it. And he says that it's like, you know, it, it's semi-simplistic. And I'm like, like, I know nothing about layering or arranging. And I've, I've taken my hand at it and I just... Nope, it's just, it doesn't work. Like, my brain just doesn't work in that kind of a creative stance. It just doesn't work on that. I think, you know, it's probably just because I, I have to learn a little bit more about music itself in order to get that. But anyway, I look at his arrangements and I'm like, that's intimidating. Like, put that away. That, that is just super intimidating. But also, the final product astounding every single time but uh this is halloween when i first listened to the drum tracks of that one like this was before i signed up for patreon i was like what in the heck and then it's like i tried to focus more like i had listened to it dozens and dozens and dozens of times 
just to wrap my head around every part. And then the more that I listened, the more I picked up on things. And then I'm like, wait a second, go back. I'm like, I have to listen to that again. And then it was like, I keep going. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is just, this is crazy. And then I'd pick up on something again. And I was like, well, wait, what was that? And then it's like, I'd pause it. And here I'd be sitting for like two to three hours. Like, not at, well, like, I would say analyzing it. But it's just like, like, this dude is just absolutely crazy. Like, it's like, it sounds like he swallowed a whole entire drum set. And it's just sitting there in his voice box. But when I was younger and I would see those types of videos where, you know, they're in character and, you know, like, uh, um, my brain never, um, fully related to the point that it was like, oh, video is shot separately from actual track. But I just thought that, you know, you did it all at once. Like you were in the makeup, you were doing the video, you did the song as you did the video. But I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that because it makes sense. Because Lane, if you look at his nose in This Is Halloween, he was having trouble. Let me just say that. And uh, it all makes sense. It makes sense now. Because when you have so much plaster that's like down to the top of your lips, um, I can see that that would make it difficult to beatbox for anything. When you don't have access to your, you know, like, oh my god, that probably sounded awful, but, um, and I think, which one of his arrangements really sticks out for me? Well, this is Halloween, of course, because, um, you know, like, it was just the introduction to it, but, um, god, there's so many of them, and they're all so, they're all so good. Um, Just Sing was a fun one, because, um, in the time period that we were in for, uh, pandemic and stuff like that, um, it was a trying time for everybody, and I don't even know how musicians managed to, to do it, knowing that, you know, like, some of your, um, uh, your revenue streams from live shows, and, you know, seeing people, and, like, Thank goodness for YouTube, because I don't think if they weren't able to make like make content on YouTube, um, I don't know where they would be, really. Because like I know a lot of them were in isolation. Well, everybody was in isolation and quarantine and just staying away from everybody. And I could see how that would be a little bit more difficult to be on the creative side when you want to be with everybody and shoot videos all together and just get the stuff done. But, um, yeah, just sing. The first time I listened to it, I, th this is going to sound funny. I had no idea that that song was from Trolls because I had never seen the movie. So then I just, I thought that it was an original. <laughs> I know, terrible, right? Um, yeah, that it was an original. And, um, I was like, oh my god, like, this song is just so good. And then I looked it up and I'm like, oh, it's from Trolls. All right then. <laughs> so, uh, but that video in particular, I mean, the editing was probably a nightmare. And, um, same with Halo. If we're talking about videos that are, like, editing-wise, are complete headaches. That's another thing about Lane that I absolutely love, is his editing style. It's just... Ju -ju 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 -ju. Like, he just... Everywhere. It's just... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Like, he, ju he just goes for it. He just makes it work. And it just shocks me every time. Um, and going back to just sing, it was just amazing to see everybody together but they weren't together like it was just seeing that arrangement and seeing so many people like just well like the song like the title says just sing and um yeah it, it kind of hit me on an emotional level well it, it didn't kind of hit me it did hit me um because i was just like this is what the world needs right now because the world is just absolute hell to say the most 
And um, like, there was just so much uncertainty around it and so much craziness. And I could talk forever about it, but that's not what I'm here for. Um, but yeah, it was definitely one of those times where it was just like, we don't know what's happening, but we still have music. Thank God that we still have music to get us through whatever the hell this is, you know? So it's just, it was crazy. Um, but it was also amazingly done. Uh, let me see. What other arrangements of his that I really, really enjoyed? Um, something just like this. That one is fun. It's really, really fun. Um, like, I think the majority of his arrangements just put you in a, in a, in a different place and in a different time zone, like, all the time. But also, it's also nice to see that Jeff also picks up on some of those things because, like, uh, Jeff had learned everything he knows from Lane for years. You know, it's kind of like, oh, well, school of hard knocks. If you just kind of go for it, you just, you go for it. Yeah, I'm not gonna say who arranges better than who because that, 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 that wouldn't be fair of me to say. Both of them arrange incredibly well. I was surprised because when I first heard True Colors, oh god, I'm gonna try not to cry when I talk about this, um, I completely forgot that Lane could sing and sing so well. And then while I'm watching the video, I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, he's on lead vocal? What? <laughs> it's like, and then it's like, you just listen to his voice and you're like, lay dreamy sigh. <laughs> And, uh, you fall in love with it. Definitely. He needs to sing more lead vocal. And then even for, uh, like, some of their other videos, like, uh, Little Mermaid character acting. How I love Les Poissons! It's like, dude, like, you love carrots on a daily basis. And then you also like cutting off heads of fish. Strange, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see. Have I had any interactions with this crazy, crazy man? He's been very elusive to me on Instagram, let me tell you. He's been very elusive. But um, it's okay, because he has butchered my name, and it's living on the internet forever. <laughs> Not my first name. My first name, the guys have always gotten correct. And Jeff says it as two words, which I think is is, is, is pretty sweet. Like, it's, it's pretty funny that way. But Lane said my first name the right way. But when it came to the last name, oh my god. So it's P-A-P-E-G-N-I-E-S. And it's pronounced Papanese. What the hell does Lane Stein do? Papaganese. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, okay... How would that look like if it was a word? And I spelt it out as P-O-P-P-A-G-U-N-A-I-S-E. Papaganese. So then I kind of get to thinking, I'm like, okay, I can actually have a lot of fun with this. And um, how can I have fun with this? <laughs> so I was doing a couple of arm workouts and I was like, huh. You know, if I keep up with these arm workouts, I will be able to, as Lane Stein has said, and I quote, pop a gun. So if I keep working at it, I will be able to pop a gun next time. So, you know, I won't be ashamed to own the last name Papagan Maze. So thank you, Lane Stein, for butchering my name so it will live on the internet forever and everybody knows. So thank you. <laughs> um, what else can I say? Lane is an amazing husband, from what I have seen and from what I, I have heard. He's an amazing family man. I feel so terrible that he had to make this public, but his wife and his his sweet little daughter, God bless her, um, got sick with COVID on his wife's birthday, which was the 24th of November, and then on Thanksgiving, which was the 25th. And I guess Doris has had it twice now. But they're both fine. They're both okay. 
But um, it's always shocking and nerve wracking to to hear that because you're like, oh my god. And then it's like, even with Lane, I'm thinking, I'm like, like how does he not get it? You know, and like that's like the most confusing thing about this whole thing. It's just it's like who gets what and who doesn't get it. You know, like it's you can be fully vaccinated, but you can still get it, and it's you know that's the thing. But um, they're doing fine. They're okay. Lane's okay. He's not sick. But now it gets me to thinking, I'm like, okay, first Ellie and Ashley had it the day after they got their, I think it was like their first dose of the vaccine. They both got it. They got sick. Lane has not had it, but Cindy and Doris have had it. And I'm like, oh god, I hope Jeff and Kathy don't get it, because my heart would break. Like, Like, I would just, I would cry so hard. If, uh, if they were to get it, like, but I, I think they're pretty good with, like, staying away from people, and I think that that's kind of the key thing, is you try to stay away from people <laughs> as much as you can. Um, yeah, I would also say, oh, he's just absolutely nuts. He's just a dork. Um, <laughs> there are just so many things that come to mind, but I can't say anything about it. Um. But yeah, he's just a complete dork. He's a complete and funny dork. And sorry if my voice sounds so far away. I just, I have my microphone set up in front of me and I'm sitting on a floor because I don't have a chair. So, um, yeah. Lane's crazy, but immensely talented. He He's really an admirable artist. He really is. And, um, yeah, he's, um, good in computer engineering, it turns out, because he actually went and did the thing, like, he went and got his full degree out of, uh, university. So, good for him, you know, to stick with academics and continue it on, but, um, yeah, he needs to play more violin, and we need him to sing more. But he's just such a character. He's such a dorky, dorky character. It's just always fun seeing them just genuinely laugh and see him goof off in every way possible. And his laugh is infectious. Oh my god, if you listen to that man laugh, and there are a couple of videos on YouTube that you can catch it like right at the very end when he just burst out laughing, he sounds like a hyena. And it's just, it's absolutely hilarious. And it's like, as much as you try to stifle yourself from laughing, he just makes you laugh. Like, the minute you hear his laugh, it's like, oh god. It's like, yep, there's all, there was all, every strength I had in me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I don't know where his obsession with carrots started. I have no idea. Like, it's just, it's been an ongoing thing with voice play, and uh, Jay, I think, absolutely hates it at this point. And, um, yeah, Jay absolutely hated it, I think, because it was just such a nuisance. It would always tick him off. But, um, I think you need that. You need somebody that's going to annoy you so much that it's still, it's like, my god, I hate you, but I love you. You know, like, it's that love-hate relationship with that specific person. It's like, you're gonna annoy the hell out of me, and I'm gonna absolutely hate you for it. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. So, hopefully that covers everything on Mr. Lane. I think if I keep talking like this without drinking water, I'm gonna lose my voice. And I don't want to do that. So, I will see you guys in the next episode. Send me your suggestions for who I should talk about next, or what I should talk about next. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.